What happens if you decide to face a life without any social media? Let's explore. 1. You at last acknowledge your issues. In Ready Player One, the book, Ernest Klein's virtual environment, known as the Oasis, offers an escape from the actual world. In the novel, actual life is difficult, bad, nearly demolished. That explains why so many people visit the Oasis, more well-liked than reality. There are no rules in this metaverse. You are free to be anyone you choose. It truly is an oasis, a location that offers relief from the unforgiving and boring desert that is life. Do you have any memories of this? Don't we all use the prominent social media platforms of today the same way? That is, to get away from our problems. In my opinion, yes. We live on the motto, the best way to solve my problems is to avoid them, so we never log off of Facebook or Instagram. In actuality, this has a compounding effect, but it is one that results in net benefits. Your problems get worse the more you try to avoid them. 2. You begin acting instead of consuming. It's always far simpler to delay taking action and conduct additional research on a given subject. The drawback of having all of the world's knowledge at your fingertips and unrestricted access is that there always seems to be more to discover, something more to aid in your optimal decision-making. The greatest illustration of this is Twitter, the network that is now well known for its infinite-like threads. Because it's fashionable to quit your work and launch your own business, there is a peak in desire for additional posts featuring well-known avatars. People have an insane obsession with unrolling Twitter threads, that is, adding more and more tweets to their collection. But is this really helpful? All right, no. Doing the thing you want to do is really impeded by spending all of your waking hours searching for more insightful information on how to do it. You're circling around, imagining and discussing doing something, but never carrying it out. No number of Instagram carousels or Twitter threads can improve your skills as a writer, manager, coder, or startup founder. The only way you can get better is to really apply the internet advice you so fervently save. If you concentrate only on the saving portion, you won't make any headway at all. 3. You escape your prison cell that you made yourself. Wade, along with every other player in the book Ready Player One, uses gloves, rigs and something resembling spacesuits to access the Oasis. Hardware that gives the impression that the virtual world is more physical and mental. Wade, the protagonist of the novel, uses this description of his apparatus at one point in the narrative. I'd come to see my rig for what it was, an elaborate contraption for deceiving my senses, to allow me to live in a world that didn't exist. Every piece of my setup served as a bar in the cell that I had voluntarily placed myself in. Likewise, despite your pride in the lovely Instagram collection you've put together, in actual reality these resemble bars that have been installed to your prison cell. The more you become fixated on purchasing items, clothing, equipment, etc., that enable you to take more flawless pictures, the greater your reliance on the platform. You eventually turn it into your jail and become more and more estranged from reality. Getting likes on social media is linked to happiness, not deep talks with actual people. It is true that some players of the online game become influencers, but there are drawbacks to it as well. Real life is no longer experienced by you. Your thoughts and actions are only focused on improving the appearance of your virtual life. It seems impossible to escape the rat race lifestyle. You give up worrying about other people. You become what you consume, as I mentioned in one of my most recent writings. Your mind begins to crave a product the moment you witness someone making an online purchase. You think about this even if you don't need it. Your brain will start to prioritize the things you don't own as you view more posts. You picture yourself as the owner of this and that it will take care of any issue you have. We just shift the responsibility. Furthermore, you are continuously exposed to an unrealistically difficult life on the internet. The vacation spots, the time off, the ideal residences. It's only decoration though, a display to upsell you, a way of life a method of reasoning, and naturally some kind of merchandise. Some unsettling information was uncovered by a study investigating the connection between Instagram use frequency and psychological well-being. The findings demonstrated that compulsive Instagram use is associated with decreased self-worth and physical anxiety. You notice more imperfections in your physique, the more flawless bodies you view. Usually this results in a decrease in your self-esteem and a zero self-perceived beauty. Social media can lead to a risky, vicious cycle in which you are always reminded of your shortcomings and the person you are not. 
since individuals only share their greatest photos on the internet. Additionally, since being connected to others makes everything seem great. When everything is perfect, it becomes the standard. You yearn for the same degree of perfection in your life and feel inadequate when it isn't attained. You can only find serenity and happiness in the imperfections that make up a large portion of everyone's life when you separate yourself from this ideal. 5. You realize that you will never get everything you want, but that's okay. Imagine having everything you ever wanted. Would you finally feel relieved? Or would the thought of running out of room to store everything drive you insane? Contentment is highly individualized. It has varied meanings for various individuals. But I did discover that acquiring more material possessions won't make you happier. It results from engaging in a routine of enjoyable activities. That is writing for me. It's probably something different for you. Certainly purchasing goods makes us all feel happy. But this passes swiftly. Every time a new emotion arises, it takes the place of the contentment derived from the prior acquisition. All of the pleasant feelings will vanish from your vision when a new object does and be replaced by negative ones that tell you that your life is still not perfect, you are still not in possession of X. The important thing is to live a life that is characterized by the practice of a meaningful set of routines. This is referred to as having VS being mentality by author Eric Fromm. We become fixated on possessions when we utilize social media. We assume that we won't be happy unless we own the same things as others since we observe what they have. This doesn't happen. Being the contrasting venue is what should be on our aim. We understand that we can't feel lasting happiness by accumulating things. It comes from doing meaningful things. The reason you feel good about realizing that you will never get everything you want is because wants emerge all the time in your mind. There is always something you want, but that doesn't mean that you actually need it. That's the mentality of being. When you focus on being, you feel good about practicing activities that bring you joy and meaning. Painting, drawing, writing, building something. Thus, you move away from wanting to have more to wanting to do and experience more. 6. You uncover what's terrifying in your real life. As painful as reality can be, it's also the only place where you can find true happiness. Because reality is real. Do you understand? These lines are from the movie Ready Player One. They explain why James Halliday created the Oasis. He did it because he wasn't sure how to connect with others. He was looking for an alternative way, a safer way, to build relationships with others. The above is the equivalent of using modern dating apps. It's emotionally painful to get rejected in real life. That's why apps like Tinder are so popular. A drink in your face hurts but you can live with a swipe. How this habit affects your life though. You never learn vital skills. A person who is only using social media to talk to others never learns how to actually talk to others. Besides, he breaks when there's even the slightest obstacle in the way. We secretly avoid real interactions because we're afraid. Afraid of rejections. If this is the case, and it commonly is, my question to you is to observe why you're so addicted to the platform. What are you avoiding? As stated, as terrifying reality is, it's still the only place that's real. Online, things are safer. You can't get injured, but if we do this all day, how do we mature? We don't. We need to expose ourselves to more obstacles. The more we fall, the more we learn to pick ourselves up. Thus, we get stronger. 7. You will be amazed how nuanced life is. I still remember life without social media. I'm a kid of the 90s. Born in 1988, my childhood was spent mostly outdoors. We didn't have phones. Our parents had to roam the neighborhood, find us and physically drag us home so we can eat together. Amazing times. Nowadays, I think that our whole physical life is a constant effort to create this flawless online persona. We're always refreshing our feed to find more things that we can later acquire. Once we have them, we're eager to share our newest possessions to evoke envy in others. It's like the more others envy us, the better we feel. We don't ever stop to look around us. Media have convinced us that what's around us is unimportant. Only what's online has value, and only if it's with the right amount of followers. People look at you, and then they quickly gaze back to their phones, searching for a higher status. You don't count. You're not on the screen. You're not famous enough. Only when you disengage from this madness, you can finally feel and appreciate what's right here next to you. It might not be shiny enough, but it's surely more real than what's out there. Some closing thoughts. People will do anything other than consider their dreadful reality. The greatest source of suffering for the modern man is the most banal, boredom. 
We can't survive even a minute without doing something. That's why social media websites are so popular and so hard to quit. They offer endless streams of positive sensations with almost no effort. You just have to move your finger. Even if life throws a curveball, we need to fight in order to survive. Resting after a wrestle proves intolerable because of the boredom it produces. That's why I personally think that the best way to leave social media, the most adequate antidote is finding something else to do when you have nothing to do. Something that's aligned with your long-term goals. Doing, not consuming. Practicing something that can help you learn something new. Or as strange as it might sound, even consider talking to the person sitting right next to you.